Welcome to this quick video on some tooling we've just released for manifest editing. So normally the tooling team produces Eclipse plugins, but this time we've done something a little different. A little while ago Microsoft came up with this language server protocol, uh, a common protocol for language servers. But the idea is basically that you implement support for a language once as a language server, support being things like content assist, navigation, documentation, put it all behind the protocol and then any editor or IDE that speaks the protocol can use your language server. So in that way we can write support for many editors, many IDEs, just once. So how does that look? Well, I'm going to clone one of the uh, Spring Getting Started guides, REST service. And we are going to go into the complete variant and we can open up VS Code. So I'm using VS Code here. This is uh, was the driver for the creation of the protocol, but it is supported by other editors. Eclipse supports it. Um, there are features open to support it in Sublime and Atom. And if you haven't seen VS Code before, it is basically uh, one of those lightweight editors, a Sublime style editor, so it's not a full IDE. So I have my application here, but I'm actually going to start working on the manifest file. So if I open up the manifest file by default, I get no support, I get no documentation, I get no validation, I get no content assist really. I mean this is suggesting words it's seen before but it's not providing them with any contextual awareness so I can easily create broken files here. But if I jump down to the extensions page and type in manifest, you'll see there is a new manifest YAML support feature. This is the version we put out, OM2 release. Let's install that. reload to activate it. Now it's plugged in. Everything looks the same but I now have a few features in here. I've got validation and if I hover I've got documentation and feedback on the errors. So this is complaining that uh, this expects to be something M or MB or G or GB and it's not. So I can fix that and the squigglies will go away. I get hover help for all the other keys in here so this is scraped from the Cloud Foundry documentation It includes examples of usage. I get content assist, so I'm going to use this quota here. And it will suggest common values I might want to put there. So that's all good, but everything I've shown you so far was kind of static validation. Um, we actually have some support for a dynamic content assist. So something like build pack, um, the answers you want here may depend on what the back end supports. And you'll see here at the moment it's saying I, I don't know what the back end is so I can't suggest which build packs you might want to use. Why don't you use the CFCLI to log in? So why don't we try that? So I'm going to log into PWS. And this is just the normal CFCLI, there's not a special variant, there's no extra plugins in here. Uh, I'm going to target my test space. So now if I flip back here, it takes a little while because it's querying the back end, but this stuff is cached. Suddenly I get suggestions based on the target environment. Not only for um, build pack, but for things like services. So this is going to tell me what services are supported in that target. So maybe I want to use a MongoDB service. And uh, if I type in a service that's not supported, you'll see I also get squigglies indicating there is no service called foobar. So because of that connection I've got um, through the command line, suddenly I can craft this manifest to be valid based on the target where I'm actually deploying the application. So that's what you can ex expect to see if you install this into VS Code. And this is implemented as a language server, so the next version of STS is going to be using exactly the same support through the language server protocol. And as other IDEs pop up, as soon as Atom supports LSP, with a little bit of glue code, you can plug in the language server and get the same support in that editor. So I think that's all I wanted to show you. Um, I will leave this here. It's something to tempt you for the future, but uh, that's going to be covered in another video. Thank you for watching.